Welcome to the Madison Miller Podcast. Today is Wednesday, January 5th, 2022. Today, we're going to recap yesterday's college basketball, NBA, and NHL games. Look ahead to tonight's games in each sport. I'll go over the latest news and notes, and I'm going to do my 2022 sports and pop culture predictions because I haven't had the time to do it yet. And my best bet of the day. We're going to start with college basketball for the day as we will go over all the results from yesterday and look ahead to everything going on for today. All right, so Ohio over Akron, 69-63. Number nine, Auburn over South Carolina, 81-66. Number one, Baylor over Oklahoma, 84-74. Number 14, Texas over Kansas State, 70-57. Number 21, LSU over number 16, Kentucky, 65-60. Army over Bucknell, 96-89. Loyola, Maryland over Holy Cross, 79-70. Lehigh over Colgate, 85-81. Navy over Boston University, 83-71. Wake Forest over Florida State, 76-54. NC State over Virginia Tech, 68-63. Liberty over Stetson, 75-59. Central Arkansas over Eastern Kentucky, 79-72. Toledo over Eastern Michigan, 82-54. Kent State over Ball State, 66-65. Eastern Michigan over Western Michigan, 85-79. Texas A&M over Georgia, 81-79. Rutgers over Michigan, 75-67. Illinois over Minnesota, 76-53. Number 24, Seton Hall over Butler, 71-56. Lipscomb over North Alabama, 84-74. Vandy over Arkansas, 75-74. Number 2, Duke over Georgia Tech, 69-57. Number 6, Kansas over Oklahoma City, 74-63. Marquette upsets number 16, Providence, 88-56. Number 20, Colorado State over Air Force, 67-59. Memphis over Tulsa, 67-64. And Virginia over Clemson, 75-65. Now we move on to today's window of games. First up is Bethune-Cookman and FIU at 1 o'clock. My projection is FIU by 19 and 5-8. And FanDuel has the line set at... 12.5 12.5 and, and 129.5. And I'm going to lay the points with FIU. Pfeiffer and Longwood, 3 o'clock. We can skip 6.30. Fox Sports 1. DePaul, St. John's. My projection is St. John's by 12. And I don't know why FanDuel doesn't have this lineup. And we're going to check if uh, DraftKings does it. It does 5 and 151 and a half. I'm going to lay the 5 with St. John's. 7 o'clock on the Big Ten Network. Nebraska at number 10, Michigan State. My projection for this game is 16 and a half for Michigan State. And I don't see that game. Oh, they broke them up. They broke them up into the bigger games and the lesser games, I see. But the line on uh, the Paul St. John's on uh, Vandals 5.5, totals 153, so lay it. And then for the Michigan State game, it's 16 and 150. So I would go with the over. Houston and South Florida, number 12, Houston and South Florida. My projection is Houston by 15 and 3 quarters, and it's 15 and 120 and a half. I'll take the under. Number 15, Alabama, Florida on ESPN2. My projection is Bama by 1 and 5 eighths. And Florida's a two-point favorite, so the one's 149. Oh, this feels like a Vegas nose game. I have Alabama favorite plus 2 and plus 110 straight up. SEC Network, Ole Miss number 18, Tennessee. My projection is Tennessee by 11 and a quarter. And it's 15 and a half and 134. I'm taking Ole Miss plus the points. Bowling Green and Buffalo. My projection is Buffalo by nine and three quarters. And it is eight and a half and 161 and a half. That's a high total. I'm going with the under. Tulane and East Carolina. My projection is East Carolina by three and five eighths. And this line is. Is one half and one forty and a half. Um, 
Is it enough for me to bet East Carolina? Yes, it is. So I'm going to lay the points here with East Carolina. Temple and UCF. My projection here is UCF by 9 and 7 eighths. And this line is 10 and a half and one three three and a half. I'll take the over. Presbyterian and NCA and T. My projection is NCA and T by five and seven eighths. And it's two and a half and one twenty eight and a half. I'll lay the points at NCA and T. Gardner Webb and Charleston Southern. My projection is. Um, Gardner Webb by nine and one eighth, and it's eight and a half and one forty six and a half. I'll take the over. UNC Asheville and Campbell. My projection is Campbell by four and a half, and it's seven and a half and one thirty two and a half. I'll take Asheville on the points. Pitt Louisville and ESPNU. My projection is Louisville by a whopping sixteen, and it's twelve and a half and one twenty eight and a half. I'll lay it with Louisville. Youngstown State and Robert Morris. My projection is Youngstown by eight and three eighths. And it's three and a half and one forty four and a half. I'll lay the points of Youngstown State. Purdue Fort Wayne and Cleveland State. My projection is Cleveland State by a whopping eighteen and one eighth. And it's ten and a half and one forty six and a half. I'll lay the points of Cleveland State. Evansville and Indiana State. My projection is Indiana State by three and seven eighths. And it is five and a half and one thirty five and a half. Um it's not enough for me to bet on Evansville. So I'm gonna take the under. VCU Davidson, my projection is Dayton or I'm sorry, VCU Dayton. On CBS Sports Network, my projection is Dayton one and a half, and it's two and one twenty four and a half. I'll take a ballsy under pick here. Davidson St. Joe's, my projection is Davidson by six and three quarters, and it's four and one twenty two. I'm or one forty two. I'm going to lay the four with Davidson. UMass Richmond, my projection is. Richmond by 14 and 1 eighths. And it's 10 and 151. I'll lay the 10 with Richmond. Chattanooga and Wofford. My projection is Chattanooga by 5 and a quarter. And this line is Chattanooga by 1, total 136 and a half. Jeez, this could be another Vegas nose. I'm going to lay the 1 with Chattanooga, but do I feel good about it? No. Um, again, a lot of Vegas nose lines out there that are against me, unfortunately. Sanford Mercer, my projection is Mercer by five and a half. And it's five and a half and 143 and a half. I'll take the over. Furman and UNC Greensboro, my projection is... Furman by one and three eighths. And it's three and a half and one twenty nine and a half. Is it enough for me to bet on UNC Greensboro? Yes. But barely any wiggle room. So I'm gonna say Greensboro. Plus the three and a half. And I give them a shot to win outright, too. They're plus 138 on the money line. VMI and East Tennessee State. My projection is East Tennessee State by six and three quarters. And it's three and a half and 144 and a half. I'll lay the three and a half with East Tennessee State. The Citadel and Western Carolina. My projection is Citadel by three quarters. And it's Western Carolina by one half, total 154 and a half. It's not enough for me to bet on the Citadel. 
But I'll take the shot at the money line at even money. I'm going to go with the over as the podcast pick. All right, next up, 7.30, Alcorn State and Jackson State. My projection for this game is Jackson State by 12 and 7 eighths. And it's seven and a half and one twenty three and a half. I'll lay the points of Jackson State, North Florida, and Florida Gulf Coast. My projection is Gulf Coast by ten and seven eighths, and it's ten and a half and one fifty and a half. I'll take the over. Embry Little, Arizona, Northern Arizona. We can skip. That's an eight o'clock game. Same as. Syracuse and Miami on the ACC network. My projection is Miami by three and three quarters. Or no, I'm sorry, three and three eighths. I read that incorrectly. And it's two and one fifty five. I'm taking the under. Milwaukee Green Bay. My projection is Milwaukee by ten. And. It's Green Bay 2.5, total 131. Ooh, probably another Vegas nose, but I'm taking Milwaukee plus 2.5 and, and plus 116 straight up. 8.30, Fox Sports 1, Creighton and Villanova. My projection is Villanova by 12 and a quarter. And it is... Ten and a half and one three one and a half. Not enough to uh not low enough to bet Villanova. So Oh, it's just announced that Caleb Daniels is out for Nova. Um one thirty one and a half the total I'll take the over. Alabama A and M and Mississippi Valley State. My projection for this game is Alabama A and M by five and a half, and this line actually is seven and a half and one thirty six and a half. I'm taking Valley State plus the seven and a half to cover the number. Alabama State and Arkansas Pine Bluff. My projection is state by three and five eighths. And it's three and a half and one forty one and a half. I'll take the over. Prairie View AM and Southern. My projection is Southern by five and a quarter. It's five and a half and one forty eight and a half. I'll take the over too. Don't feel great about it. Texas Southern and Grambling. My projection for this game is. Texas Southern by five and five eighths. And it's five and a half and one thirty four and a half. Um I'm gonna take the over, but I don't feel good about it. Nine o'clock is PNU. Number twenty five Texas Tech and number eleven Iowa State. My projection is actually Texas Tech. Rarity where I have the uh the lesser ranked team as a road favorite, but here we are. Texas Tech by two and five eighths. And it is Iowa State by two and a half, total 126. And I'm going to take Texas Tech plus the two and a half and plus 118 to win straight up. ESPN 2, North Carolina, Notre Dame. My projection is Notre Dame by, I'm sorry, North Carolina by five and one eighth. And it's two and a half and one forty six. I'm landing with North Carolina, Valparaiso, and Northern Iowa. My projection for this game is Northern Iowa by a whopping eleven and seven eighths, and it's seven and a half and one thirty six and a half. I laid the points in Northern Iowa, Missouri State, and Bradley. My projection is Missouri State by. Three and five eighths, and it's one and one thirty seven. I'll lay the 
one with Missouri State. Big Ten Network, Penn State, Northwestern. My projection is Northwestern by six and a half. And it's six and a half and one thirty. I'll take the over. And then last but not least, we could skip at Westcliff and Long Beach State. All right, now I'll move on to the NBA. We will recap the games from last night. It was a small window, and we'll look ahead to a larger window for tonight. Grizzlies over to Cavaliers, 110-106. Memphis, 25-14. Cleveland, 21-17. Raptors over to Spurs, 129-104. So best bet, 2-0 in 2022. Toronto back to 500 at 17 and 17. San Antonio 14 and 22. Knicks over to Pacers 104 94. Knicks 18 and 20. Indiana 14 and 24. Suns over to Pelicans 123 110. Phoenix 29 and 8. New Orleans 13 and 25. And the Lakers over to Kings 122 114. The Lakers 20 and 19. Sacramento 16 and 23. Now we look ahead to a busy window for tonight. 7 o'clock, you have the Pistons and the Hornets. My projection is Charlotte by a whopping 20 and an eighth. And it's 9.5 and, and 227.5. I'm going to lay it with Charlotte. 76ers Magic, my projection is Sixers by 11 and 7.5 and, and 210.5. I'm laying it with Philly. Rockets Wizards, my projection is the Wizards by 10. And seven eighths, and at six and a half and two twenty four and a half, I'm going to lay with the Wiz. Spurs Celtics at seven thirty. My projection is Boston by thirteen and one eighth, and it's eight and two twenty one and a half. I'm laying it with Boston. Nets Pacers the return of Kyrie Irving. My projection is Brooklyn by a whopping sixteen and five eighths, and it is seven and two eighteen and a half. I'm going to lay with Brooklyn. The Warriors and the Mavericks at eight o'clock. Or I'm sorry, that's a seven thirty on ESPN. My bad. Projection, Golden State by 7 and 5 eighths, and it's 5 and a half and 2 11 and a half. And it's enough to bet on Golden State, so I'm going to lay the points at Golden State. 8 o'clock, Raptors, Bucks. My projection is the Bucks by 11 and 5 eighths, and it's 8 and 2 25 and a half. I'm going to lay it with the Bucks. The Thunder and the Timberwolves. My projection is Minnesota by 8 and a half, and it's 8 and 2 13 and a half. I'm going to go with the under. Um, 10 o'clock, Jazz Nuggets. It's the, the uh, nightcap of the doubleheader on ESPN. My projection is Utah by 7 and a quarter. And it is 5 and 221 and a half. I'm going to lay the 5 with the Jazz. Heat Trailblazers, my projection is the Blazers as a 6-point home underdog. And they're a, a 1-point favorite. It's a little 216 and a half. I don't think they should be favored with both Dame and CJ out. That's ridiculous. I'm taking the Heat plus the one and even money straight up. And then the Hawks and the Kings. My projection is Sacramento by one and three-eighths. And Sacramento by one, total 229 and a half. And I'm going to take the over in this game. All right, NHL time. We'll recap the games from last night, and we will look ahead to a small window of games for tonight. Bruins over the Devils, 5-3. Boston, 17-10-2. New Jersey, 13-16-5. Panthers over the Flames, 6-2. Panthers, 22-7-4. Calgary, 17-8-6. Lightning over the Blue Jackets, 7-2. Tampa, 22, 8, and 5. Columbus, 15, 15, and 1. Red Wings over the Sharks, 6 to 2. The Red Wings, 16, 15, and 3. San Jose, 17, 16, and 1. Avalanche over the Blackhawks, 4 to 3, and OT on a game winner by Kale McCarr. Colorado, 19, 8, and 2. Chicago, 11, 17, and 5. Jets over the Coyotes, 3 to 1. The Jets, 16, 11, and 5. Arizona, 6, 22, and 3. Predators over the Golden Knights, 3 to 2. The Preds. 21, 11, and 2. Vegas, 22, 13, and 1. And the Ducks over the Flyers, 4 to 1. The Ducks, 18, 11, and 7. And Philly, 13, 14, and 6. Only two games, 37 o'clock. You have the Oilers and the Maple Leafs. The Maple Leafs are 
minus 240 favorites. Edmonton's plus 195 over under 6.5. Over is minus 114, under is minus 106. Edmonton plus 1.5 is minus 132. Toronto minus 1.5 is plus 108. No Connor McDavid in this game. So part of me likes the under 6.5 at minus 106. And at 7.30 on TNT, the Blues and the Penguins. Penguins minus 142. Or St. Louis plus 116 over under 6. Over is minus 112. Under is minus 108. Blues plus 1.5 is minus 215. Penguins minus 1.5 is plus 172. Um, this is a tough one. The Blues have been really good. The Penguins have been rock solid. Um, but for my play here, I'm going to go under 6 minus 108. Be a little contrarian. So two unders today in the NHL as my selections. All right. Now we'll go over last night's college football bowl game. Um, it was very under the radar. Like, everybody just forgot about it and kind of ignored it in a way because of who was playing and whatnot. But it was the Texas Bowl as Kansas State came out on top 42-20. to 20. So my pick of the over comes through. Kansas State finishes at 8-5. and five, And LSU finishes at a disappointing 6-7. and seven. So... That's that for college football. We're going to put college football to bed until Monday's show. All right, news and notes for today. Um, so breaking news, maybe like half an hour ago, I noticed that Joe Ingles was placed in COVID protocol. That is the first Utah Jazz player to be in COVID protocol this year. Who would have thought it would take until January 5th for a Utah Jazz player to enter COVID protocol? You would have think that one team has had, or every team has had at least one or two already. But that's crazy. It took this long for the Jazz to get a player put in the COVID protocol. But here we are with Joe Ingles. Um... The Jaguars are interviewing Jim Caldwell about their head coaching spot. Um, I like that potential interview. Jim Caldwell's had success in the past. He's got teams over in Detroit. But people look at him as a Peyton Manning product, which is ridiculous. The Bucks still have rights to Antonio Brown. They haven't officially released him. And still has not shown up on the NFL's wire. Baker Mayfield out for week 18, and we'll have shoulder surgery as soon as possible. Derrick Henry expected back at practice today, and there's a long shot for week 18 against the Texans. That's crazy. Everyone thought he was out for the year. Jalen Hurts wants action after fall as... um, He writes up a letter to the Washington football team and the league asking for a follow-up after fans nearly fell on him on Sunday. The Jaguar fans are trolling owner Shad Khan and his mustache, which is kind of funny to see. A couple COVID protocol guys in the NHL, Connor McDavid, we talked about that during the hockey segment. And Claude Giroux and Yvonne Provorov of the Flyers. Dougie Hamilton has a broken jaw and is expected to be placed on the injury reserve list. Jim Harbaugh opened the coaching the Raiders. As sources from both sides believe that he may be tempted to go back to the pros and coach the Raiders, which would be wild. Um, Cincinnati starting cornerback Ahmad Gardner declares for the draft. And he's projected to go in the first round. David Ajabo declares for the draft, too. The Minnesota Wild call up Matt Boldy and Marco Rossi from the AHL before Thursday night's game in Boston. Um, we didn't talk about this when going over to basketball games, but Julius Randle back from COVID protocol, and he came back with the bang. He was a, He looked like the guy from last year. Um, so non-sports news, um, Brian Laundrie's parents seek possession of his notebook from the FBI. The U.S. recorded 
1 million daily COVID cases, and Joe Biden had to address the media about that. Seth Meyers tests positive for COVID and cancels NBC's late night this week. And the Albany DA declines to pros- prosecute Andrew Cuomo over a groping allegation. This isn't going to be the end for a while. We're going to hear more and more stuff that comes out of that. All right, now I'm going to do something fun. Um, my 2022 sports and pop culture predictions. Um, I was going to do this on the show on Monday, but I forgot. But we're doing it today. Um, so I'm just going to talk about random things that popped in my head as predictions for the sports year. And it can change based on injuries and COVID and whatnot. The Buffalo Bills win the Super Bowl. This was my preseason pick, so I'm sticking with it. Jim Harbaugh, despite flirting with the Raiders, stays with Michigan. But the Raiders will hire a big name as their next head coach. Jim Bayheim retires from Syracuse. I think that um, he'll hang it up at the end of the season with Coach K, and they'll call it careers. Kyrie Irving stays a Brooklyn Net. You know, um, you've heard rumors that they might audition him for a trade. But ultimately, I think he stays around with the team, whether that's a um, good thing or a bad thing. And I think there's a chance he ends up becoming a full-time player for him. Ben Simmons is finally traded. I think this is long overdue. I think that the Indiana Pacers are a team that makes some sense if they were to uh, go into a little bit of a reboot. And I could see a three-way deal happening with Miles Turner going somewhere um, and Ben Simmons going to Indiana. Like, I could see, like, New York being involved and, like, Miles Turner going to the Knicks and Mitchell Robinson going to Indiana and maybe, like, Obi Toppin going to Philly. Um, maybe Levert's in the trade, too. I could see Karis Levert going to Philly in the deal. That would make a ton of sense. Um, and back to the Pacers. I think they trade more than two key players. I said um, Levert and I think Miles Turner. And I think the other one, that could be on the move, could very well be DeMontis Sabonis. I don't know where he goes. I think Boston makes a ton of sense. I think that some other teams make a lot of sense for him as well. COVID does not cancel the Pro Bowl and All-Star Game, so... Just an optimistic prediction that I wanted to throw out there. The Brooklyn Nets win the NBA championship. I just think that, uh, like I said, Kyrie comes back. Maybe they make a couple trades. Joe Harris turns it around. Kevin Durant, still Kevin Durant. James Harden finally gets a ring. Because don't forget KD and Kyrie already have him. The Colorado Avalanche win the Stanley Cup. I think that um, their time is now. Um, I think their goaltending thing has to be a little bit better, but I really feel like um, they have a great chance. The Major League Baseball and the Players Association finally come to terms in February. I think that... um, Eventually, things will get back to normal. Maybe a couple of spring training games get canceled, and that's it. And they do, like, a, a short spring training. Um, After the agreement happens, the two big shortstops that are still left on the market will sign. I'm going to say the Astros signed Trevor Story to replace Carlos Correa, who I think will be signed by the New York Yankees, because I think the Yankees are just a team under so much pressure to do something, and everybody else is bad in the town, maybe other than the Rangers, and you know the pressure's on them, and plus the Mets making improvements too. 
So maybe they're not bad anymore. So the pressure's on because of the Mets and because of the irrelevancy of the Giants and the Jets. So I just think that they're under pressure to do something big, and there you go. They signed an ex-Astro before. I think they can do it again. And they've signed other um, rival players. Jacoby Ellsbury, that didn't work out, though. Johnny Damon, that did work out. More than two athletes are on the Masked Singer. I don't know who they are. And I'm talking about current athletes. Um, I could see it um, being like maybe like Clayton Kershaw would be a good get on the show. Like, that's a big enough name that people will be like, oh. Um, I could also see it being somebody like Amon Shumpert, who um, just won Dancing with the Stars. So he was more pub now from a pop culture standpoint. Um, I, but he's a former player. Um, but in terms of current like active sports players, I could see Clayton Kershaw being on there and his goofy personality. Um, we haven't seen a hockey player yet on the show. I mean, Mike Fisher would make a ton of sense. He's retired though, and I say that because he's married to Carrie Underwood, and um. There's some others that jump out to me as well in terms of athletes. I can see. I know I threw out T.J. Watt before. I could see him. I could totally see, like, um, hmm, I'm trying to think of other guys I could see on that show that are active players. Tony, oh, Tony Romo's a former player. Oh, my God. But, like, some recognizable names. Maybe Dak Prescott. Um, Aaron Rodgers would be fun because everybody knows who he is. I could see Aaron Rodgers being on that show, too. Um, multiple athletes on Dancing with the Stars. That's a show I could see Rodgers on. I can see Julius Randle on that show. Um, the New York Giants keep Joe Judge, but Dave Gettleman and the team part ways, and Kevin Abrams is promoted into his position. Um, this is something that Giants fans don't want, and John Barrett doesn't listen to the fans, so I think that's inevitable. Daniel Jones will still be the quarterback, and... They're gonna have to suffer through yet another like six and eleven, five and twelve type of season again. The Las Vegas Raiders hired a big name coach. We discussed that already. Um the starting quarterback for the Pittsburgh Steelers in 2022 will be Gardner Minshew. I just think that that is somebody that is available via trade. And I could see the Eagles setting him to the in-state rivals. The Steelers will also draft the quarterback, but not in the first round. Um, to potentially be the long-term guy. But I could see Minshew going there as just like a placeholder because the team's actually still pretty decent from a roster standpoint. The Cincinnati Bengals will make a huge, huge splash in free agency. You know that's the gonna be the, the sexy team going into the two thousand twenty two season. They're the breakthrough team. Everybody loves them. Um like Zach Gertz would be a big get for them. 
Maybe like Orlando Brown, Brandon Scherf. And on defense, um, I can see them going for like a veteran type of player like Randy Gregory and Colias Campbell. Stephon Gilmore's a big prize on the market too. Don't forget him. Tyron Matthew, you know the Bengals are going to be going for big names, big shiny toys. Jesse Bates is a free agent today. They could very well keep him, but you know, I think the Bengals will make a splash and they'll sign or re sign two or more of the names I mentioned. I'm going to say they signed two names that I mentioned, and I guess they potentially bring back Jesse Bates as well. Um,. So, college basketball. I think UCLA will win the NCAA title. I think that they'll come back from their COVID pause and Johnny Gizang will lead the Bruins to an NCAA men's college basketball championship. I think a big name in broadcasting will move on. I don't know who that's going to be, but every year you see like a big name in the media or in broadcasting that moves for, from one network to another. I don't know who that is this year. We saw Tom Rinaldi move. But I think it's somebody that we usually see on TV. And we're not going to count Ken Rosenthal because they announced that one already. Maybe he's still going to be on Fox, but he just was laid off from MLB Network. So we'll see. What happens there? I think American Idol is going to be really good this year. Um, I feel like there's going to be a ton of talent. The three judges are still there. But my prediction of this Idol season is that despite COVID cases up everywhere, they'll be doing in-person audiences again this season. Alrighty. I think that's it for predictions of 2022. So we'll move on to best bet of the day. Brought to you by FanDuel. Um, a lot of the NBA games jumped out to me today. And I'm going to lay two units on the – hmm, there was a team I really liked. But I don't know if I trust Charlotte to win by double digits, even though they're playing Detroit. I don't know if I trust the Wizards. I do not trust the Celtics. So I'm going to lay the 7.5 in Kyrie Irving's first game back with the Nets against the Pacers. Um, This is a bet against the Pacers, too. They have a lot of big names out. I should have I thought about going against them yesterday. But I can't say I should have because I did win best bet yesterday. But I thought about the going against yesterday. So I'm going to... Actually, do it today. So, minus seven and a half for the Brooklyn Nets against the Indiana Pacers. All right, so there you have it for best bet of the day. So, three NBA picks for best bet so far in 2022. So, tomorrow I'll, on the show, I'll recap everything from today. Look ahead to tomorrow. We'll see if I have an activity planned or not. You'll have to wait and see to find out. And obviously, news notes and best bet as well. Hope you guys have a great day, everyone.